Right, I'll just start off then. I'm talking about the art of heritage visualization because the fragmentary nature of the archaeological record and the contradictory nature of the archival record creates problems for the heritage visualizer. Here we have a painting uh, showing Sydney in about 1800, and I want you to pay close attention to this area here. Big white building, jetty, and there's a low building here that's been identified as the forge. So there's a little close-up of it. Um, but this painting from 1804 also shows the jetty, and it shows the big white building, but the forge is over here. So here we can see the forge is quite far away from the jetty, but here we can see the forge is right next to the jetty. So, oops. Ah. <laughs> And there are tropes, as well as um, dis, uh, differences between um, different archival documents. So this particular one, this could be a trope. I am a, if there's a sailing, uh, captain of a sailing ship in a foreign country, and he says, paint me a picture of Sydney so I can hang it on the wall and put my boat in it, please. <laughs> um, this is definitely a trope because when we look at other, average, uh, other paintings of early Sydney, we can see a group of Aboriginal people and it's a hidden in the darkness there, but there. So very definitely a trope to include a, an Aboriginal group. Um, and this guy with the cattle could also be a trope. It could be to show that the land was bountiful. Um, it could also have been a contrast. So here we have the industrious uh, European and the lazy native. <clears throat> so what's a visualizer to do? <laughs> Luckily, this is where the archaeological imagination comes in. And it does not deliver things that are made up. Um, Big long quote there from Michael Shanks, uh, really remains our resources for constructing stories, accounts, etc. I'm preferring to go with Picasso here. Art is the lie that tells the truth. So as well as being interested in heritage visualization, I'm very interested in VR. It's very powerful for creating a sense of being there in users. Um, and I decided that, based on this print, I would make a VR copy of this print, essentially. Um, and I based it on the print, and I included all the tropes. So we've got the guy with his cattle, we've got the Aboriginal group here, and we have a vessel. Um, and I added a few tropes of my own. <laughs> um, the flock of birds. I used to work doing um, special effects for TV and film, and it's very common in films, if there's a big sweeping landscape, I think Lord of the Rings or whatever, they'll put a little flock of birds in to give a bit of scale and a bit of life, and it is such a trope that you can get a plug-in. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the other trope I put in was an audio one. And apparently in the sort of 1920s, 30s, when they were making those black and white Tarzan movies with Johnny Weissmuller, one of the sound engineers, audio uh, artists working on the film, heard this. If I can, will it play? And, oops, he thought that that sounded very much like monkeys. And so that kookaburras was used as part of the jungle soundtrack, which of course was very confusing for Australians because they're watching the movies and they're thinking, why are there kookaburras in Africa? <laughs> it was equally confusing for me. I grew up in the West Indies with the Johnny Weissmuller movies and I came to Australia and I thought, why are there chimpanzees in the Australian bush? Um, so 
The audio, of course, in any heritage visualization that is before 1900 is completely made up. So this is where the art, if you only include in a heritage visualization what you know is 100% accurate, it's going to be full of holes. It's not going to be complete. So you have to embellish it. And it's that gray area between over-embellishment um, uh, that the heritage visualizer has to very carefully tread. Um, and I thought, I don't know how much time I have left, but OK, we just have enough. Um, let me just stop this. So obviously, in VR, you have the helmet. You can look all around. Um, but that's, uh, well, this is live playing of the VR, but obviously not for the headset. Um, and that's pretty much it.